Jeff Adcox to come up. Again, I'm Randy Adcox. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, before I do, I just want to bring up a person's name that some of you may remember. Uh, some of the ones who are not from here probably don't remember her, but um, Mary Nams Viber and I went to school together. Um, and in December of 1986, she went Christmas shopping at Golden Reese Mall. I walked the first year Golden Reese Mall was open. Uh, she didn't come home from shopping that night. Her husband, of course, came concerned and called law enforcement and they started looking for her. Uh, two days later, they found my, uh, Mary's body. She had been stabbed 16 times. She had been raped and thrown in a ditch like yesterday's trash. Um, it was a horrible thing for her family and friends to go through. Um, I think it's safe to say her family never got over her death. And the point of this is Mary was a sweet girl. She never harmed anybody. She certainly deserved what happened to her. And she was out Christmas shopping, of all things. Um, that being said, there has been some concerns raised recently in recent meetings about some crime issues in Rocky Mount. Um, you don't have to be, you know, uh, a rocket scientist to, to see and understand that we do have some issues here uh, in the city. And frankly, I, I think um, there's some things we can do as a city. And I'd like to propose tonight um, a, a task force. Um, Crime Prevention Task Force aimed at young people uh, working in conjunction with law enforcement and the city council and the mayor. Um, I've been asked by a group of citizens to represent this community, but at the same time, I'd be more than welcome to have anyone else who would like to participate in this task force to join with me. Um, what I passed out earlier was basically this comes from the uh, National Crime Prevention website. Um, and I won't attempt to read all this, a lot of information here, but basically it's a coordinated intervention by the community and law enforcement. Um, it looks at the, uh, you know, what causes the, the gang problem and so forth. Uh, it looks at, uh, there's a lot of numbers in here, and again, I'm not going to go through all of this, but the bottom line is, I think it's something worthwhile to look at. Um, I would love to meet with any of the council members. Uh, I've attached my business card. Okay. Uh, my phone number and email address is on that. Uh, if anyone like to discuss this further, um, but I just think, you know, uh, with all that Rocky Mountain's got going on now, um, we really need to address this crime issue, and the gangs are truly becoming a problem uh, all across the city, and if you live in Inglewood or in Greystone or Campbellwood or somewhere away from communities that aren't affected by this crime, you may feel like you're you know, immune to it. Um, I think Mary Nance would, would be a prime example of how you're not. Okay, thank you. So much. Thank you. Johnny Cunningham. Good evening. Johnny Cunningham, number five, Grant Street. 17 years ago today, November 13, 2000, six children and one man died in fire. Six others injured in North Carolina Blades, two blocks from the fire station. That would be three blocks from the new event center. The children range in age four months, 14 years. We did find victims on arrival. We brought him out and we tried to work on him to resuscitate him, but were unable. And we ended up unsuccessful. She identified the other victims as her cousin, Curtis Moore, 14, Steve Moore, 7, Marvin Harvey, 14 months, Antoine Lane, 14, and Michael Coleman, 2 and a family friend, Bobby Harvey, 49. I bring this to your attention 17 years now because with the process of gentrification shattering over into impoverished black communities, this situation has thousand-fold. Just last week, we took a mother and three of her children out of a home that 14 resided in. You can really tear down a property on Pender Street, right across the street. There are 15 family members living <coughs> in one house. It's a two-bedroom house. Teresa Moore 
It was just racing right to me, she said. I just heard them and they're crying. I woke up from all the hollering and screaming, said Terry Cody, a neighbor who lives across the street. They were trying to get the kids out the house. For 27 years, there's no coincidence that 17 years today, November 13th, we've been trying to get these children out of these infernos. A fireman made a comment when they were fighting that blaze. They said the heat from the fire was so intense that it melted protective shields that the firemen wear on their helmets. Just imagine a four-month-old baby breathing the treacherous fire to their love. 14-year-old children. You got about 30 seconds, Mr. Cunningham. In honor of these babies, these children that was lost 17 years ago today, let them have that 30 seconds in silence, please. And just ponder and imagine if we did what we know to do then. But praise be to God, we have the opportunity today to do what we need to do to get these children out of these houses. Thank you, sir. Lewis Turner. Can you be last? You can certainly be last if you'd like. Uh, Bronson Williams. Got one more after him. It's a uh, uh, Bronson Williams. <clears throat> I will say that uh, what Mr. Cunningham just spoke about, uh, two of those people he named, Curtis Moore and Antoine Lane, were actually classmates of mine. So I remember that at Edwards Middle School, uh, dealing with that tragedy from uh, slum lords in our community. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm thankful to be in the uh, committee as a whole meeting today where the city council talked about gentrification, how to deal with issues that are impacting our community. Uh, I understand that the city um, elected bodies, with all seriousness, uh, with grabbing teeth in the situation and hearing uh, the citizens' uh, issues about gentrification, the word Asians, what would happen. I, I'm thankful to have an elected body and, and the continued uh, support of uh, uh, Chris Miller as well, who was just re-elected in the uh, runoff piece. So again, uh, I'm glad that I was in that meeting to hear the facts as they are presented uh, every month by the city uh, organization. However, I want to talk about something I saw on Facebook on November 5th, and I'm going to quote this. This is a whole piece that someone posted on Facebook. It says, trying to open a business inside the city limits of Rocky Mount is, absolutely, is an absolute nightmare. I wasted thousands and thousands of dollars trying to open up a business here, and the city made it hell every step of the way. In total, I spent around $20,000 and all I have was a lease on a building that I can't use until they let small businesses create jobs for people and put money back in the local economy. Nothing will change. When I read that, I said, this certainly isn't the city council that I know. But it does speak to staff within the institution. Oftentimes, the Directors are made by this body. I see them. I can witness to the fact. But somehow or another, there's a miscommunication between uh, the city uh, elected officials and the staff. In fact, I was with you in Chapel Hill when, you, when city council members talked about that very issue uh, back in 2015. We, we must do something about that because certainly I love Rocky Mountain. We don't want Rocky Mount to be on a, a Facebook page where people say that it's not the right place to do business. In fact, there should be a big billboard that say we're open for business. Uh, and that our planning department does not assume that people are doing things uh, uh, for, for whatever reason. Recently, I just received some false information from the city uh, today, including myself, about a particular business that I intended to open up in the community. And, uh, and I'll talk about those issues both uh, with city staff in the next coming days, uh, and also through local media as I, as I often do. Uh, but we certainly have to grab hold to uh, the conversation that goes beyond these walls and how it is interpreted uh, by staff members. Um, and, and I certainly don't put that blame on the city manager she's got here, and I think she's doing an amazing job with the things I've heard you've done uh, thus far. 
Uh, so I appreciate that. And one last thing, that uh, WNCR TV, the TV station I'm on, we're moving to uh, 21.1 if you watch it over the year. And real soon we'll be moving to a new location. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nehemiah Smith. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, publicly congratulate those members who retained their uh, seats on the council. I pray uh, for your continued success and your efforts to move Rock and Isle progressively forward. Uh, the second thing, I want to thank the city manager for her uh, tabled initiative, um, uh, creating an environment where employees feel comfortable expressing their concerns or suggestions, uh, I think is key to a healthy workplace. And so I want to thank her for that, for that uh, forward thinking, and uh, I'm encouraging uh, the black firefighters uh, to attend these sessions, and I am sure that they will be able to realize some semblance uh, of fairness, uh, something that for them has been lacking for some time. So I'm, I thank you for that, uh, because that's one of the issues that they had. They were looking for an environment where they could come and they could sit and they could talk uh, about those things that they saw that weren't quite right in the department. And so I'm sure that there may be others in other departments. And lastly, uh, at the intersection of Barnes and Virginia, uh, I live uh, at uh, 1620 East Virginia Street, but right there at that, at that intersection, we have two issues. Uh, one of the issues is that we have uh, school kids. We have two schools that are right there in our community, which is Baskerville School and Parker uh, uh, are right there. And so when the kids are getting out of school, of course, you know, they're walking home, uh, they're either walking to, to uh, uh, Hillsdale, they might be walking uh, in, uh, towards the Mayview area. But we have an issue right there at the corner where people will run that stop sign. And so it makes a dangerous situation for our kids when they're coming from school. And, uh, uh, and there's, there really hasn't been a police presence there to monitor that situation. And so it would be a good thing if we could get uh, someone to monitor, to monitor that situation for the school kids because I would hate for anybody's child to get hit uh, because somebody is careless and uh, in, in running the stop sign. But also, the second issue with that is, is that late at night, uh, usually probably around 10 o'clock or so for the last month or so, we have uh, maybe three or four times I've seen a, a roadblock right there at that corner. And, you know, the police set up a little road check or whatever. Now, I haven't seen that in other communities, but I see it in my community. And then, I have, there are a lot of elderly people that live in our community, and so when they see the lights, you know, they get, they get startled uh, 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 by that type of thing uh, because there's no pre-warning. I understand why there might not be, but still, at the same time, if we could get uh, uh, someone to look into uh, a light there, uh, maybe just a caution or blinking light, uh, letting people know that there's traffic coming through that area so that we can get those people who are running that stop sign or just running through that area to kind of slow down. We need something there uh, to, to make them slow down, even if they have to put in speed months. I don't know what they have to do. I don't know what the what the uh, uh, traffic people will do for that. But we need to look at that issue because I don't want kids getting hurt there. And second of all, they're scaring some of the, the elderly people in our community with those, those roadblocks uh, uh, in that. Right there, that, that intersection. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turner? Uh, Lewis Turner, 158 South Washington. I did not intend to do the presentation, but I must speak to what Mr. Spear said. I know at least one child was killed some years ago. And I know for the last 20 years we're trying to get sidewalks to the cure. I don't know what the hell is going on with us. There's no excuse for not having sidewalks for all being good children. We've been fighting for it for 20 years. Uh, the one thing I want, you can tell me where this Overy Street is, so I know where to go and eat Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, I uh, miss you Perry. Very cold. We can make it a cold meeting. She ran home, I ran home, and came back. She didn't know about this signing up to speak, so if you would, I'd ask you to ask to let her speak in my time. If I may. Two minutes, Miss. I 
I came to uh, make comments at this, on the citizen participation plan, so I'll wait until that time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And um, just remind everybody, uh, we've just started this the last couple of meetings, um, so we want to try to reiterate every every meeting. Uh, we do have it at the beginning of the meeting, but we do want people signed up. Uh, it gives us a little bit better process and uh, able to, to manage it a little bit better. Um, 